choir. Good morning, Shepherd of the Hills. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad. Amen? Amen. 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 Wonderful to have you all here. My name is Mike. I'm one of the pastors on staff. I want to welcome you all here, especially if you are new or visiting. We have a communication card in the pew in front of you. Go ahead and feel free to fill out as much as you feel comfortable with, and we'll keep you up to date on what's going on. And uh, if you are new or visiting, feel free to stop by the welcome desk. We've got a little coffee treat there for you. We'd love to just let you have that, because who doesn't need more coffee? And if you're telling me you don't drink coffee, just let me have it. I'll drink yours. But I also want to say a special Mother's Day welcome to everybody who's here, who is a mother or who has acted in a mother role. I want to thank you for all your ministry in that. A couple other things I want to let you know before we get rolling is uh, Pentecost is coming up in a couple of weeks. And one of the traditions around here is that we have geraniums, we get the red flowers, we decorate the sanctuary with them, and then uh, come after Pentecost, we plant them outside. So if you'd like to order geraniums, you can stop by the welcome desk, and that's six bucks. Also did want to let you know, if you'd like to worship with your offerings and your tithes, you can do that in a couple different ways. You can do it through the offering basket in the back. You can uh, go to the church website, or you can text GIVE to that number behind me, and that'll get you a nice, secure giving link. Lastly, today is Music Appreciation Sunday. So this is a congregation is a wonderful tradition of blessing us with great musicians and great music, just as another way to worship. And so we just want to say thank you to everybody who does that, who helps with that. And whether you're up here playing or singing in the back, helping with the technical stuff, we really appreciate that. So I did want to invite Lu well, Hold on, hold on, Crystal. I want to invite Lucas up. Okay? Ch chill. Just relax. There you go. There you go. Good morning. Whoa. Hi, Mike. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Um, uh, yeah, just wanted to take a minute, and uh, on behalf of Cynthia, who couldn't be here, um, thank, uh, from the bottom of our hearts, all of the musicians um, who help make our music ministry um, what it is. Uh, you all have... Um, jobs and responsibilities, uh, commitments, and you still make time uh, to come and be a part of this. And we don't get to do all of this awesome music stuff that we've been able to do without um, all of your dedication, all of your hard work. Um, it's really amazing. Um, so now, if you'd give them a hand, please, our, all of our musicians, <laughs> choir, handbells, our children's choir, gospel group, um, everybody, we are blessed. Um, to be able to work with uh, so many dedicated uh, musicians. It's, it's really a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. I just want to add that it is a real joy to work with Lucas and Cynthia and the rest of the staff here. They are an amazing group, just as wonderful musicians and wonderful human beings. So thank you. That is all the announcements we have this morning. So if you would please stand, if you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You please remain standing for our opening hymn.
Let's begin our service by confessing our faith and asking by confessing our sins and asking for forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for gathering us here this day to celebrate your love. We pray that, we would help to, uh, that you would help us to understand your love and your grace and live in reaction to that always. Amen. If you go to have seats, uh, we are going to continue with a couple of just sharing of what a great uh, people sharing from the choir and the handbells, just what a ministry that is. So. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carol Umberger, and uh, Tom and I moved to Hartford from Omaha in August of 2020. Yeah, in the middle of COVID. We, we made a cross state, yeah. So, but most churches at that time were only holding online services, and so for months we worshiped online with our previous congregation. And then as things eased in the spring, we started searching for a local church. And the first time I heard Pastor Mike preach, I knew that this was a teacher I could listen to every week. And I can still tell you what that sermon was about. Both Tom and I served in the Air Force, and military folks learn pretty quickly that if you're going to move every couple of years, you better figure out how to get plugged into your new job and your new community pretty quickly. Um, and when you're stationed far from extended family, your job, uh, your on-the-job friends and your church friends become your family. And over the years, we've made many wonderful friendships. Serving in some capacity is the mark of a disciple, and it's also a great way to meet people and get connected. I've been involved in choir and music programs at most of our duty stations, so joining the choir here was a natural place to start making friends. But I can honestly say that we have rarely been as warmly welcomed and included in the life of a church as we have been here. We have made some treasured friendships at uh, Shepherd of the Hills in a very short time, and all while praising God with his gift of music. A few of us in the choir have solo quality voices, and the best you can say about a lot of us is that we can carry a tune. But Lucas works his magic, and he teaches us how to sing together and make beautiful and joyful music. Summer choir is coming, and that's a good way to check us out and to see if this is where God may be calling you to serve and make new friends.
Good morning. I'm John Wenham, and I was asked to speak on behalf of the Bell Choir this morning. Uh, every time we ring, we, we hope that we're praising God with our music and, and honoring God. And this morning, we hope that we're honoring the, all the mothers that are out here and watching online and those that have passed before us. Sherry and I have been members of Shepherd of the Hills since 1986, and we've been part of the Bell Choir for over 33 years. Uh, we, like many of our ringers, uh, also sing in the voice choir. And these two groups, I believe, represent the largest small group that is here at Shepherd of the Hills and has been continuing on since probably the 60s when the church started. I joined the bell choir begrudgingly. Sherry came home from one of the first practices and said they need more bell ringers. And there's one guy up there, so you should feel comfortable. That one guy is, <laughs> that one guy is still here, and that's Bud. <laughs> And now here I am speaking to you uh, 33 years later about ringing. Uh, think about it, 33 years is a long time in anyone's life, and it's really a long time to commit to something. And, but I can assure you, it's really been rewarding. Sherry and I have rarely ever skipped bell choir practices. We enjoyed it, we enjoyed the people, and we enjoyed the music. I hope that I can encourage your younger people here, especially some of the young men, to uh, give it a try. I think you will like it. If you've ever played a piano or an instrument uh, in a band, a guitar, uh, you have the skills to uh, play bells with us. Playing on a stand involves some coordination, uh, concentration, and commitment. Uh, Lucas will help you read the rhythms and following the dynamics and, and learn the different bell ringing techniques. A number of us here have played together for over 25 years. Some of those people have passed before us and uh, left, left to our other locations, but those new members that have come in, I think every one of them will tell, will tell you that they've been warmly welcomed into their, our small group. Uh, maybe in 33 years, one of you will be up here uh, talking to somebody else, trying to inspire them to uh, join the bell choir. Thank you for your time.
Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. At this point, I want to invite our reader forward, and as she's coming up, uh, we're going to dismiss the kids for children's church. So if you've got a four-year-old through an eight-year-old that's looking for a sermon that's a little more physically moving, uh, we'll send them out the back, and we'll bring them back after the message. The reading for today is from Romans chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace by which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, God died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, he died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord.
to be seated. I want to start here this morning. Way back when, like a long time ago, I was serving in a congregation in Toledo. And I was talking to the bishop. This is back when I was part of the old DLCA. And the guy who was bishop at the time was a very thoughtful, very caring guy. He was exactly what you want in a bishop. And I was talking to him one day, and I said, hey, why don't you come down and preach one Sunday morning, and that way the congregation can get to know you, you can get to know the congregation. It'll be great. He's like, awesome, I would love to. And he said, as long as I'm there, I'll lead the adult education hour. It'll be like a good old-fashioned parish visit. And so he did. He came down, he preached, he presided at communion, and then he had this great discussion with the congregation during that in-between service time. And he asked this question, which has been rattling around in my head for about 17 years now. And he said, do you think the best days of this congregation are ahead of us or behind us? Let me repeat that. Do you think the best days of this congregation are ahead of us or behind us? And that is just such an interesting question. And as you hear that, some of you might be thinking of what you define as your own glory days or your best days. Some of you guys have told me stories about growing up during the baby booms when Sunday school rooms were just spilling out and you got baptized with eight other kids. And some of you might be thinking about some time in the past, maybe when we opened this building or some other time when you think Christianity was a lot more accepted in the culture. And you might be wondering, are our best days behind us? And I want to look at that question through the light of what we just heard Shelley read for us. You see, what we have been doing for the past month or so is we've been exploring what the Great Commission means. The last thing that Jesus said before he ascends into heaven is, go and make disciples of all nations. And so for the past couple of weeks, we've been looking at the book of Acts, and we've been looking at the book of Romans. We were doing that last week, this week, next week. And we're examining, what can we learn from the early church? What can these lessons from 2,000 years ago teach us in this culture? And I want to go through this passage. And this is Romans chapter 5, and I just want to read this again since it's so beautiful. Since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus, through whom we have gained access by faith into grace into which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I love that. I was thinking about this yesterday. Like, I want to get a tattoo of that right here so I can just read that to myself when it's a bad day. But I love this line. I love this progression. It's suffering. We rejoice in our sufferings because suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. Character produces hope. And hope will not be put to shame. Isn't that a different message than what you hear about? Isn't that a strange message by the standards of the day? And I want you to think about who Paul is writing to. This letter was written about the year 55. Paul was in Corinth at the time, which is in Greece, and he writes to this church in Rome. And he hadn't been there yet. And this church in Rome was probably just about 50 people. They would have been a mix of rich and poor, a mix of men and women, a mix of different social classes, meeting in somebody's house. And they were probably looking, thinking, our best days are ahead of us. But the question becomes, what does that mean? What does that mean to glory in our sufferings. 
And for looking at that, I really want to focus on this last line here. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. You see, I've really been feeling convicted over the last week or so. I've had a number of really good conversations with people. And I've really been feeling convicted that we haven't been spending enough time talking about the Holy Spirit. We haven't been spending enough time talking about what it means to live transformed by the whole power of the Holy Spirit. This whole passage is predicated on us living through what God is doing in our lives. Paul's book here, Paul's letter to the, uh, to the Romans, it's really two parts. And the first part is Jesus died for your sin to make you new, to give you a new life. And you are free from your sin and your old life and all the things that held you back. And the rest of it is, okay, here's what we do in response. Here's how we live in response. And in fact, he wraps it up, or we get towards the end in Romans 12, and he says, look, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's this whole thing that you live in this new way. And it's not by you being better. It's not by you saying, I am better, and I can power through, and I can do it, whatever. It's, no, 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 no. Let God make you into a new creation. Let God make you something new. You don't get transformed simply because you try harder. You get transformed because God transforms you. That's why we can glory in our sufferings. That's why we say hope isn't put to shame. Let me tell you another story. Back in 2009, I was on a mission trip up to San Francisco. You want to go ahead and put that first San Francisco picture up? There we are. Okay. This, we had a group of 20 some odd kids when we were going up in San Francisco. We we're doing a bunch of different things. And we split up the kids into three different van loads. And so this was the group of kids I was with that week. Fun thoughtful, smart, funny, bunch of kids, really great kids. And if you ask me what I remember of that trip, I can tell you stories about the sufferings. Let me tell you this. We had some truly world-class guys who would snore on that trip, okay? I remember waking up one morning, and I looked at my friend Mike, and I said, Mike, you need to go to a doctor because a healthy person does not snore like that. Okay, And I can tell you about long van rides in cold and miserable San Francisco weather. I can tell you about all those things. But you know what I remember most about that trip? It's the joy. Go ahead and throw that other San Francisco picture up, please. This is more what everybody really was like. There was a whole lot of silliness on that trip. But it was such a joy-filled time. I remember sitting there in the San Francisco, one of the food pantries working in a very sketchy part of town, and just the joy and the singing and the laughter from these young men and women I was working with. And it wasn't because they were that good on their own. They were human, fallen, sinful people like anybody else. But the Holy Spirit was transforming them. The Holy Spirit was at work in their lives. That, my friends, is what we need to focus on. Can you go back to the Romans 5 verse, please? That's what I want to talk about this morning, and that's what I want us to get out of this. See, I want you to think about this. The only thing wrong with this question that we ask about our best days ahead of us or behind us, is we get the scorecard and the time frame wrong. See, what we do is we look at this and we say, we're going to put our hope in God and God's going to give us the best choir and the best preachers who get up here and wear the nicest robes. No offense. But, But what the truth is, 
is this is about us being transformed by God. This is about us being changed into his reflection. This is about our hearts being changed. You see, you remember what I said a minute ago. And I said, you look at these people in Rome in the year 55, and they'd say their best days are ahead of them. They might have thought that. But how do you think they felt 10, 15 years later? In the year 64, the great fire of Rome happens, and Nero blames the Christians. And it's the first, Christian, it's the first persecution of Christians across the empire. About that same time, Paul, who wrote this letter, wrote basically a third of the New Testament, gets executed because he is a Christian. In the year 70, the temple is destroyed and those Jewish believers who had become followers of Christ would have been heartbroken. This place that had been the center of where God had worked, where God had poured out his spirit, was gone, burned to the ground, one stone not left on top of another. And I'm sure they were thinking, what has happened to us? But there's something else I want you to think about. Rodney Stark wrote this wonderful history of the early church. It's called The Rise of Christianity. If you like this sort of thing, highly recommend it. It's very readable, thought-provoking, fascinating book. And Stark, who is a very well-regarded historian, recognize, uh, estimates there was probably only 7,500 Christians in the whole world at the year 100. Think about that. All of the Christians in the world, if you put them in the stadium where the Brewers play, they'd fit in the first baseline. And how did they go from that few of a number to shaking the empire 200 years later? It wasn't because they sought earthly power. It wasn't because they said, we are going to go fight all these battles. It was because they were transformed. They were changed into that reflection of Jesus, that character that loved, that hoped, that loved their enemies and spoke grace and peace to everybody they met. Friends, we are called to be that same presence. We are called to be in a place so when people meet us, when our coworkers, when our neighbors, when our friends, when our relatives say, you know, there's something different about you. You're not angry like the rest of this world. You carry peace with you. You're different. We're called to carry that into every interaction we meet. Friends, that's what we carry with the Great Commission. And that's why I firmly believe our best days are ahead of us, both as a congregation and as a faith. Jesus said that his church would prevail against the very gates of hell. And that is something that we can stand on 2,000 years later. And it is because suffering produces perseverance, and perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And that hope is not put to shame because we are being transformed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to continue our worship with some reflection time. And as we do this, I want to just ask you to ask God What's he doing in your life? How is he transforming you? And how is he at work there? And as we do that, we're going to listen to the handbells, and we are going to have a chance for you to give your offering. You can do it through the offering basket in the back. You can give with the uh, text, give to that number behind me, or of course you can always go through the church website.
Let us celebrate our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of God, and life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of our resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Please respond with, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, our faithful companion, you promised to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for giving us life and breath. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dearest God, we thank you for the life you have given us. As we experience both joy and pain, help us to fix our gaze on Jesus. Help us to trust and believe that you are crafting a beautiful life for us that will magnify who you are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, you know we are not perfect and you love us anyway. We are so thankful for your forgiveness. Help us to have the faith to turn to you when we need to confess. Living free and unburdened through your forgiveness is a great gift. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing Lord, you sent your Son to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone and to all who are sick and grieving. We especially ask for healing for Sue Slichter recovering from surgery for a broken leg and continued prayers for Aidan Smith now out of ICU. Together, let's pray for our brothers and sisters at Slinger Community Church. We pray that God would bless them and pour out the Holy Spirit on their community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all those who long to be mothers, anyone who is grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child. Support all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and we will hear from the choir again.
So together we remember in the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so together we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is now ready. We believe that all those who believe that Jesus is their Lord and Savior are welcome. The ushers will direct you up the center aisle, back down the side aisle. Children that have not yet received communion instruction are more than welcome to come forward for a blessing. If the communion assistants would please step over there, we will commune them first. Go ahead and have a seat.
Eyes. We don't take communion as a collection of individuals, but we take communion together in what Jesus has done. And so receive this blessing. May this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace until he comes again. Amen. And now we're going to have the choir sing our final blessing today. Blessing. It's okay. <laughs> Seriously, I love you guys, but it's an act of worship, not a performance. Thank you. All right, please remain standing for our last song. <laughs> 